Hey, welcome back everyone. This is the Happy Toolbox and this week I'm going to be showing you how you can leverage something called a MoGraph selection tag to really define and tweak the finalized look of your cloner object setup. A lot of times you have a scene like this, maybe you're really happy with the placement overall, but you know, you have two trees that are knocking into each other or something to that effect. So I'm going to show you how you can fix that, how you can also leverage color with these MoGraph selection tags, etc. So if you're interested in that, let's jump in. Okay, so first and foremost, there are a lot of ways you can fix this using a cloner object and MoGraph system. Um, if you have a lot of trees kind of knocking into each other, like here's one, I think there's one over here, like this, a lot of times you're gonna use something called a push apart modifier. So if I select my cloner, I'm going to go up to MoGraph, Effector, and use push apart and then kind of dial this percentage down. So that way, just all of these objects are kind of pushing apart from one another. That way you can get rid of that intersection that's happening really easily. But that's for kind of your broad scene. A lot of times you're going to have kind of this finalized look that looks really great. You love how your shot's set up, etc. But there's one pesky cloner object in the scene. So this is the use case for that. And we are going to define what that pesky cloner is using a MoGraph selection tag. So I'm going to select my cloner object, go up to MoGraph and go down to MoGraph selection. And if I just kind of click on the canvas, you'll notice these little dots showed up. So the dots are basically at whatever that cloner object's anchor point is. So in this case, our anchor point is at the bottom. I'm going to select right there, that bottom anchor point, and you'll notice over here a selection tag has appeared called MoGraph Selection. And now with that selected, you can always do this later on even if it's not selected, but kind of a shortcut is if you have that selected, you can then go up to MoGraph Effector. I'm going to choose a Plane Effector, and it'll right away in the Plane Effector throw in the selection tag you had selected. So now you can see we have control over this individual cloner that would be really hard to maneuver otherwise. So let's just say I just want this out of the scene. I don't even want this in here at all. What I'm going to do is uncheck position, check scale, check on uniform scale, and just put negative one. And now that is gone out of my scene and I don't have to mess with that pesky cloner object that was ruining my scene. And then what's great about these selection tags is it works as any other selection tag would for polygons. I'm going to select the cloner object and my selection tag. I'm going to go over to this tree that I don't want here. I'm going to hold shift and select that object as well. And there, it already understands, okay, this selection tag is tied to this plane modifier. And yet the whole thing is still completely live and you can use your cloners as see fit. Rather than stamping down this cloner object, deleting that tree, doing something to that nature, that would be far more destructive. So that's super helpful overall. Another really great use for MoGraph selection tags is color. So a lot of times I'm gonna have this full scene of cloner objects. It's kind of this forest look. I probably don't want all of these to be exactly the same green. And yes, you could duplicate this pine tree in the cloner object, throw you know individual materials onto each one of these and it will kind of disperse them as it sees fit. But a lot of times you don't really want that. You want to select and kind of art direct the specific trees and colors you want. So the really easy way to do that is with these selection tags. So I'm going to delete my selection tag and my plane modifier for now. I'm going to go into my green material I have set up and go into my texture and go down to MoGraph and add a color shader. So right away, it's just going to be white. Inside of it, the channel is color. This is all you have to do to set this up. The way then you drive the color of this, and shout out to Nick Hopkins from Run Kick Shout. He made a tutorial like 10 years ago with a big Mario kind of block with a question mark on it, and I still use this technique to this day. You click on your cloner object and you go up to MoGraph Effector and add a shader. So right away, everything scales really big. We don't wanna mess with scale, we just wanna mess with color. So I'm going to uncheck scale, but down on color mode, it already says effect color. I don't need alpha strength on, we're not gonna mess with that. And then over in the shading tab, it says custom shader, which is what we want. You can also go down to color and like drive a material tag with this whole thing but I think it's easier in this instance to kind of drive just pure color at this point. So custom shader, 
And then in the shader dropdown, I am going to choose color. And then let's say we want our kind of greenish color again. All right, so you'll see our scene did not update. And I specifically set my file up in a way that would make this happen just because this has happened before to me and it's kind of annoying. So right now I have this subdivision surface with my cloner and everything stacked under it. And no matter where I move this in the stack, it's not going to generate that. And even if I render this, you're not going to see that green color. Only when I uncheck that subdivision surface will you see that green color. So you just wanna make sure your scene is set up in a way that your subdivision surfaces are part of the cloner objects themselves rather than on top of the whole cloner system. So I'm just going to make that change really quick. There we go, now we have our sub D surfaces on and we have our color. So from here, let's say I want kind of these back few trees to be colored a different shade of green than I have here. How I would do that is I would duplicate my shader and especially if you're doing lots of colors, might be easier to start labeling these as always, but I'm just going to make two for now. Let's just make it really apparent and kind of make it this brown color just so we know what's going on. Make sure in my cloner object, in the effectors, this shader is also in there as well. Right now it is overriding everything because it is the last in that effector stack. So what we want to do is we want to then do our MoGraph selection tag. So I'm going to keep my cloner object. I'm going to go up to MoGraph, MoGraph selection. I'm going to just tap on the scene so I get those dots at the bottom. And I'm going to start adding a bunch of objects here. So let's just do those. Now I have the selection tag. And then in shader one, I'm going to go over to my effector and pull this selection tag into my effector. And there we go. We have only those trees colored that brown color and we have the rest of them colored the green color. And this is purely driven by shaders. And what's really cool is this is just one material. I didn't have to make individual materials for all these things with the same you know, looks. I just had to make one set of materials. So that is pretty much it. I just wanted to show you how handy MoGraph selection tags can be. They are your friend, especially on those tricky, pesky shots. And it's pretty cool that you can drive color through them as well. If you would like this video and subscribe to the channel, that would help me out a ton. If you have any comments or questions or additions to this, you know, I'm just a person trying to make some tutorial videos. A lot of times, you all have really great tips and tricks that you have found as well. So I'd love to hear those in the comment section below. And as always, if you're interested in any 3D models, head on over to thehappytoolbox.com. That is where this tree pack is from. We have a bunch of tree models you can pick from here. All right, I'll catch you next time.